Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me. I know it's been a really, really long time since I last uploaded a video and I've missed you guys so much, but I'm back. And today I have a very exciting sneaker review because we are going to be talking about the MX1 Big Bubble. Now, this is set to drop on Amex Day, which is the 26th of March, and they will be releasing these in men's and women's sizes. Alongside this release, Nike will also be dropping a great school pair called Challenge Red, but it doesn't feature the same Big Bubble, but it has like the similar colorway. But anyway, we are here today to talk about these sneakers because look at this so the very first thing that we'll notice about this sneaker is the enlarged air unit now obviously this is called the big bubble and it's so hard to talk about these sneakers without actually talking about the history behind the mx1 i'm sure at this stage you guys probably all know the story nike just posted a video on their youtube channel where they speak to tinker hatfield about the mx ones so if you haven't already seen that i highly recommend you watch that but i think it is so cool that Nike has finally brought back this obscure 1986 version of the MX ones. Now the MX ones were designed by Tinker Hatfield, who is an amazing sneaker designer, and he designed this sneaker in 1986. And you can see the sketch here. There's actually like a little date at the bottom, and it says 1986. The MX one was the very first Nike sneaker to feature a visible air unit. So the Nike Air technology wasn't new to Nike. It's been a around since the Nike Air Tailwind which came out in 1978 but the MX1 was the very first pair where you could actually see the air in action and at that time it was something very new and very revolutionary and I'm so happy that Nike has brought back this big bubble because we are all used to seeing the MX ones with a bubble this size so this is the Concepts Air Max ones and all the MX ones that we are typically used to seeing has a small air bubble here where you can see three visible air chambers whereas with the big bubble you can see it is significantly bigger and you can see four visible air chambers here and if you look at older Nike ads from 1987 when they first officially released the MX ones all the ads feature a pair of MX ones with a bubble this big I'll insert photo so you guys can see and the reason why Nike shrank the air bubble after the initial run was because they were finding out that the air unit had the tendency of cracking and not being stable in extreme cold environments and so they realized that and so they quietly shrank the air bubble and that is why we're all used to seeing that size of an air bubble and i don't know about you guys but growing up i thought anything with the air bubble was the coolest thing i just have like vivid memories of like seeing like a pair of like 95s or even 97s and the air unit was just like so fascinating to me but i was out here like still wearing bruins or something i wasn't that cool but i actually really wanted a pair of air maxes like anything the air unit I wanted it and I definitely did not have a pair of MX1 at the time. Nike has done so many iterations of these OG MX1 but they have never done one with the big bubble like this and also the tooling off the upper of the sneaker is meant to reflect Tinker Hatfield's original design from 1986. So yeah, I'm so happy that I have these pair in hands and I feel like even if you're not typically like an MX1 wearer, I feel like it is just such a good shoe to add to your collection because I think the storytelling and history behind these sneakers is incredible. Anyway, let's get back to these sneakers. We kind of already spoke about the visible air unit here. You can see it is significantly bigger and when I first saw these shoes, I was not used to how big the bubble looked because again, we are used to like a smaller air unit like this but the more I look at it, it's definitely grown on me and I love how it's meant to look like the original pair. Another thing you'll notice right off the bat is also how smooth the midsole is because most of the Amex ones that we're used to seeing typically has like a texture on the midsole also with the two lines growing across this way but here you can see it is pretty smooth. There is a little seam here 
here where the air unit is and on the heel of the midsole there are two lines that stops right before the visible air unit. The midsole is definitely a lot softer compared to your typical Air Max ones. One of the things that I feel like a lot of us are curious about is how do these feel on feet in comparison to your regular Air Max ones and I have to say that they are definitely a lot softer, a lot bouncier but it's nothing crazy. The Amex ones were originally designed to be running sneakers and I cannot imagine myself running in a pair of Amex ones now because I think I'm just so used to like the vapor flies. I was like wearing like Lunalons. Lunalons? Is that what you call it? I'll, I'll insert a photo. I just remember it being like this neon midsole so I'm more used to like that kind of running sneaker but this was one of the OG running sneaker back in the day and Nike wanted to do this cutout window so that people could actually see the air unit in action and it is meant to absorb any impact from running and also the upper of the sneaker is actually entirely synthetic so you can see the paneling here is synthetic suede and there's also breathable mesh over here because they want it to be breathable and also durable at the same time. I would have preferred to have a sneaker that had like a suede or nubuck upper but because they were trying to recreate the 1986 pair I think I'm okay with the synthetic materials in this case. In terms of laces, it doesn't come with a set of spare laces, but the laces on these are pretty good, I would say. They seem to be tied on pretty well, because you know, sometimes with certain Nike sneakers, they are like too slippery or like the kind of nylon or whatever they've used is just too slippery and it just always comes undone. These are so far so good so I like the choice of laces that they've used with this particular Air Max 1. Another thing you'll notice is that the midsole is a lot thicker than your typical Air Max 1 because the air unit is much larger on these and you can see there is a difference especially when you look at the back of the sneaker that the big bubble definitely sits higher and I feel like I lost my train of thought before. I think I was talking about how it feels like on feet. Sorry, I just like went into details and I just remember I'm like, I was trying to tell you guys what these feel like on feet. They definitely feel different from your typical MX ones. There is more bounce and it is softer and it definitely is a very comfortable pair of sneakers, but I wouldn't say it's anything crazy like i wouldn't compare it to say the first time i tried a pair of vapor max for example i was like oh this feels like different whereas this one is like okay it feels different but it's nothing that's like game changing maybe that's just my personal opinion but it does feel different on feet and it is a very comfortable sneaker another detail i want to note is when you look at the sock liner on the sneaker you can see a size 7 printed here so this is the size of the sneaker and it's cool because back in the 80s early 90s that's typically how the sizing would be on a pair of sneakers whereas now we're usually used to seeing like a little tag they did still include the tag on the inside side of the sneaker but I think it's a really nice touch that they've stamped the size on the sock liner so this one here is a size 7 which is a women's size 7 so I got the women's pair for this but like I said they do have this in men's and women's sizing and I think they fit pretty true to size this is actually like a little bit small for me so my true to size is a men's 6 which is a women's 7.5 so um, I don't know why but I got a women's 7. So anyway, I'm going to pick up another pair to make sure it's in my actual size, but I would say these definitely fit true to size. Because I have the women's pair though, I find that they're a little bit more narrow compared to like the men's version. So ideally, I would prefer to wear a men's US 6 just because I'm used to my sneakers just being like the men's sizes and I prefer, prefer, <laughs> I prefer a slightly Rumia toe box. Also, this is what the outsole looks like. I don't think they've done too many changes to the outsole compared to the Amex ones that we're now used to seeing. On the tongue here, you can see that it has the Nike branding on this little nylon patch that's stitched onto the tongue. And overall, I think it is such 
an amazing sneaker especially if you love sneaker and knowing the history behind sneakers and I think Tinker Hatfield is such an amazing sneaker designer. I think it's really cool that Nike has revisited Tinker's original Amex One design because they wanted to create the sneakers that he intended for the market in the first place and obviously a lot has changed since 1986 in terms of technology, production, materials and the team at Nike started this big bubble project around 2020 so it's been three years but we finally have the Amex One Big Bubble 37 years later. It is such a good OG colorway, even though it is quite a striking color. Again, because back in the day, this was designed to be a running sneaker. I think they wanted it to be quite bold. I think it's also still a very wearable color. I'm sure you guys have also seen photos of the royal blue colorway floating around. I think that's expected to drop maybe 2024. So I think it's cool that Nike's gonna roll out the big bubble in a few more colorways because I was actually wondering whether this was gonna be like the one time one run of the big bubbles but considering how much work nike has put into recreating this shoe i don't think they would just do it as a one-off thing if that makes any sense in terms of styling this i feel like it would go well with a lot of things in my video i am wearing this red capital sweater because i was really trying to color coordinate the red with the red sweater i know that's pretty like straightforward but anyway that was the look i was trying to go for i don't think you necessarily have to wear red to wear these sneakers i think a nice white t-shirt and olive fatigue pants would go really well with this even a gray hoodie like this with some nice blue jeans would look really good because it kind of matches the gray paneling on the sneaker but yeah i can definitely see myself wearing these a lot and i am just so so excited that nike has finally brought back the big bubble and i think i mentioned before that these are set to release on the 26th of March. I'll make sure to leave all the release details in the description bar below. Another thing is the sneaker box. So this is what it looks like. Again, it is not your typical MX1 box. Nike went with a different direction here and they wanted to make it look kind of aged. So you can see it's like a black box with a little bit of red peeking through. There is a really cool Nike cutout here. So you can see the inside of the shoe box and on the back here you can see four little circular cutouts because it is made to reflect the four visible air chambers on the actual sneaker itself so I think that's a really really cool detail but yeah guys hopefully I didn't miss out on any key details on this sneaker but I highly recommend that you guys pick it up I'm actually thinking about picking up a second pair so we'll see these retail for 230 Australian dollars and I think that's pretty much it guys. I mean, it's been a minute since I've done a sneaker review. So hopefully I made sense and I don't know. Hopefully I still know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will be back posting more regularly. I actually went back to Malaysia and Singapore at the end of last year for a short trip. And I vlogged all of it, but I never ended up posting it I actually edited the content as well I don't know if you guys want to see it so if you want to watch it just let me know and I'll post it because I feel like it's kind of old and I don't know whether you still want to watch like old content but if you do let me know I will upload that video uh, if not um, the content will be as per usual now so like sneaker reviews food vlogs and stuff like that because I really really missed it I'm looking forward to my next review, I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. Like guys, I picked up so many pairs of Vermeros recently as well. Um, but I never showed you guys because I love me a pair of Vermeero 5s. Okay, see, I'm rambling off again. Today's video is meant to be Air Max 1. Anyway guys, I'll catch up with you guys another time in my vlog. That's when all the rambliness can happen. But this video is about this sneaker. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys really, really soon. Bye.